Every winter, thousands of very loud, large visitors storm the beaches of Año Nuevo State Reserve, a jagged stretch of coastline 60 miles south of San Francisco. 50,000 tourists a year trek along sandy dunes and past coastal brush to glimpse these massive marine mammals during their breeding season from December through March. Over there, you see an alpha bull fighting another guy who wants to be an alpha bull. Elephant seals are the largest seals in the world. Male northern elephant seals can be up to 16 feet long and weigh up to 4,500 pounds. Brawn trumps brains as the males fight for the much smaller females who congregate in harems dotting on your Nuevo, which was named for the New Year's Day in 1603 when it was first spotted by Spanish explorer Sebastian Vizcano. Nearly 5,000 elephant seals congregate at Año Nuevo State Reserve during the breeding season. It's a testament to their astounding comeback from near extinction 100 years ago. The animals were exploited for their uh, blubber, which was reduced to a very fine oil. By the 1890s, only about 30 elephant seals survived. Confined to Isla de Guadalupe, a volcanic island off the coast of Baja, California. In 1922, scientists from the California Academy of Sciences made a survey of rare animals on the island. They found a small herd of elephant seals. A few months later, the Mexican government declared the island a protected reserve. All of the 170,000 elephant seals that exist today trace their lineage to the 30 individuals that survived on Isla de Guadalupe. Today, the population of northern elephant seals is robust, with breeding colonies scattered from Point Reyes National Seashore to Baja, California. And for male elephant seals, mating is a high-stakes game with few winners and lots of losers. One male may monopolize mating in an ideal situation, with up to 100 females. With their noses inflating with air, the males trumpet their battle call. These fights to gain access to breeding females can be brutal. But as scientists at UC Santa Cruz discovered, the encounters allow male elephant seals to learn the distinctive calls of males they fought with before. If a male won an earlier fight, it will move toward the sound of the losing seal, ready to take it on. If it lost, it will scamper away, avoiding another fight. Athletic may not be a word that springs to mind when describing these blubbery beach visitors, and yet they can dive and swim past much of the marine competition. Elephant seals are really animal Olympians. When it comes to diving, the only other group of marine mammals that even come close to them is the sperm whale and beaked whales. They're diving to routinely between 1,500 and 2,000 feet of water, and occasionally they'll dive for almost two hours. Elephant seals also travel twice a year, up to 12,000 miles to forage for food such as fish and squid. So studying them when they're underwater for most of their lives requires high-tech tools. And if you go to this textbook from 1990 on pinnipeds, here's where we thought the distribution of northern elephant seals, up from Vancouver Island up here, down to the middle of Baja, California, and then a few hundred miles off the coast. Once we put a satellite tag on the animals, we found that elephant seals were using virtually the whole northeastern Pacific Ocean. We had no idea this is what they're doing because the animals are underwater and you just don't see them. Today, this seal surveillance has met the digital age. Since 2000, Dan Costa and his students at the University of California, Santa Cruz, have tagged more than 500 elephant seals. I'm involved in a project called the Tagging of Pacific Predators, and it's a project which takes the approach that we've had with elephant seals, but magnifies that to look at how the northeastern Pacific Ocean is used by different species of marine animals, not just marine mammals, but marine birds, sharks, fishes, and turtles. The tagging is revealing how critical certain regions of the ocean are, not only for elephant seals, but also for the survival of their marine neighbors. There's a group of animals, elephant seals, northern fur seals, uh, salmon sharks, 
and albatrosses all feed in this region of the North Pacific transition zone. It's this region between the colder and warmer waters of the North Pacific. So this is colder water here, warmer water, Hawaiian Islands, and all these little squiggles or worms or northern elephant seals. And you can see that they're, they really like this area on the, the sort of cold water side of this, this big system. And we call these fronts just like we have a weather front coming in in the atmosphere. None of this groundbreaking research would have been possible without innovative tags, which keep getting smaller and smarter. This tag just measures time and depth. This tag just gives us animal location, so it transmits to Argo satellites overhead. This tag tells us where the animal is, what it's doing, and gives us much higher quality locations. I have to hold these two things together. This does it all. We can dial up via the internet and find out where the animal was when those data were transmitted. Satellite tags are giving us a much deeper, richer understanding of where these animals go and where they lived and where they spend their time. Today, Dan Costa's students prepare for the returning seals and the clues they carry about their lives at sea. We're at Año Nuevo State Reserve in Northern California today, and we're here to recover satellite tags from an adult female northern elephant seal. So on a typical day where we're retrieving a satellite tag, we locate the female that we've been watching. And as we sneak by all the seals, we're um, getting ready to give an initial injection of a mild tranquilizer, basically to make the seal fall asleep so we can safely retrieve the tags. Uh, 46 X. And then we check the health of the animal. And looking at her, she's probably about 500 kilograms. So she's quite a large northern female elephant seal. She's off. Someone read it. 547. We start taking measurements like blubber thickness, blood samples, and we also take whiskers. This essential field work is also a reminder of the cycle of life and loss which marks the breeding season. She did not have a pup with her. She has given birth and we have observed her for multiple days with a pup, but sometimes in the craziness of the harems with male fights and things, they lose their pup. <laughs> High-tech tracking tools and old-fashioned fieldwork are helping lift the ocean's dark veil to reveal the secrets of the seals. But some secrets remain. If you have a female that goes out to the International Dateline and turn around and come back like a beeline and finds Ani Nuevo Reserve, how does she do that? How did they die for two hours? What's the metabolism? How do they change their ability to store oxygen? How do these animals take the pressure. <laughs> it always amazes me that after all these many years of studying these animals, that there's still so much more to learn. It's what drives me. It's what drives a lot of us that do this.